In these next two topics, we want to learn how to organize continuous data in tables and histograms. Now remember that continuous data will have decimals. So we have several definitions to look at here. The lower class limit is the smallest value that's within a class and the upper class limit is the largest value within a class. Now remember, classes are also known as bins. Some technologies call them bins, some books call them bins, right? So the, the bins, the organizational areas in which we're putting our numbers, right? So these are classes or bins down here in this example. Um, we always round them, or almost always, um, but it means everything up to but not including the next lower class limit. So often the upper class limits will end with 0.9 or 0.99 or 0.999, right? Um, we can also round them to whole numbers. That sometimes happens, but it's assumed that every value up to the next lower class limit is included. So for example, down here, this is 49.9 is listed, but it's really 49.9999999, right? Everything up to 50, but not including 50, because 50 is the start of the next class or the next bin. Right, so they can also be whole numbers, I, w I will say. So um, note, the upper class limits can also be whole numbers. It happens. All right. Next, the class width. Now the class width is one of the things that students um, do incorrectly a lot of the time. But you want to make sure that you really highlight and put this definition right on your note sheet. It's the difference in consecutive lower class limits. Okay, So it's how far apart your lower class limits would be because the upper class limit is really going on to 0.99999 and forever, you can't use that. So you have to take, let me, if I can write it as a little formula here, lower class limit minus, because that's what difference means, subtract the previous lower class limit. That's what consecutive means. Oops, if I can fit it in there. <laughs> so it means take one of them minus the previous lower class limit. All right, so let, let me go do this in an example just so you can see. So down here, um, I'm going to skip to letter D. <laughs> this is not in order, um, but we're going to find this class width. So the class width is the difference in lower class limits. So you take, for example, 50, take away 40. This lower class limit, which is 50, take away the previous lower class limit, which is 40. So 50 take away 40 is 10, right? So your class width is 10. So you have a lower class limit minus the previous class's lower class limit. And there's nothing special about the two classes I picked. I could have done it with some of the other classes. For example, 60 take away 50 is 10. 70 take away 60 is 10. So you can do it all along here, but you're taking the lower class limits, right? The 40, the 50, the 60, the 70, 80, and so on. So that's a very important um, formula, a very important thing to get correct. An open-ended distribution is when either the first class or the last class, or both of them, have no lower class limit, right? Or upper class limit, respectively. So for example, this is open-ended. We don't know the lowest value because we just know that it's below 39.9, but we don't know how low this goes. Similarly up here, we don't know how high this goes. We don't know the highest value because this just says above 90. So these are both, this is open-ended on both sides. It's open-ended down here and it's open-ended up here. All right, so let's, <laughs> since I jumped to part D of this example, let's do some more of this example. 
Okay, so the following distribution, it's a frequency distribution because it has the frequencies right here, shows the actual real life percentage grades on the final exams for seven sections of Math 133 for 2018. These are real, real data, real numbers. Okay, so let's state the third class. Okay, class are the bins, right, the lower and upper, so that's the class. So this would be the first class because it's the first row. So first class, second class, and their third class is right here. So the third class will be 50 to 59.9. That's the third class. All right, now let's state the second class's lower class limit. Okay, well the second class was right here, 40 to 49.9. The lower class limit is 40. That's the lowest number that's included in that class, so 40. Now what about the sixth class's upper class limit? Well, okay, so if I'm going down first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. The sixth class is right here. The upper class limit is 89.9 as listed there. Right, so 89.9 or you could write 89.9 and put a little bar on his head because it's really everything up to 90 but not including 90 because 90 is the start of the seventh class. Class width again we found Right? It's, and you can tell this particular one has a consistent value of 10, right? Because when you look at the values, 40 to 50 to 60 to 70, you're going up by tens. That what you're going up by, quote unquote, that's your class width. Which interestingly enough, just so you know, the class width is the width, the reason it's called width is if I was making a histogram of these, of these data, so 5, 8, uh, I won't have room for 16, but you get the gist, right? The width is that distance right there, or that distance right there, right? The width is the distance in the bars. So it's the um, width of a histogram bar. That's where it gets its name from, right? So. This would be a height of 16 and so on. So if I was doing this for these particular data, I wouldn't really have a number for the first one. But I know this line right here, which is where the group of eight starts, is 40. This line right here is 50. This line right here is 60 and so on. Right. So I can see that it's going up by tens. And that's the width of those bars. All right, now what about the modal class? Well, the modal class, uh, we haven't quite seen mode yet, although usually you've seen it in school somewhere along the way. The mode is going to be the most frequent, um, or the highest frequency, let me put it that way. So highest frequency. We'll learn that in chapter three. Okay, so the modal class is just saying, hey, what class has the highest frequency? That's what it's saying. So if I look at my frequencies, 45 is the highest frequency. Therefore, 80 to 89.9, that's the modal class. That's the class with the highest frequency. So 80 to 89.9. Nine. And if you want to write why for your own notes, it's because um, that's the class with the highest frequency. Next. All right, this is going to be a little bit tricky. So to pass the final, a student needs to score 70% or higher. What percent of students passed the exam? Okay. So passing is 70% or higher. So we need to look at the table and we need to think about, okay, here's 70 right here. So 70% or higher is these three groups. So I need to add up all these three groups. I need to add, so the number that passed would be equal to, I should change my color here. I don't want to write with a highlighter. 
the number past would be 32 plus 45 plus 34. Okay, so let me go grab Desmos. And let me add these. 32 plus 45 plus 34, and I can see that it's 111, right? 111. Okay, so this is 111. All right, so now what's the percentage that passed? Because that's a different question. So this is how many passed. Let me just label that. So this is how many students passed. But I want the percentage. I want the percentage that passed. Okay, well, the percentage that passed is a different question. For that, I need to take the number that passed and divide it by the total. All right. Well, I know how many passed. That's 111. For the total, I need to find the total of my frequencies here. So I need the, the big total, the big sum of all of these frequencies. So that sum of the frequencies, I need to go grab Desmos and type those in because I don't know that value. So 5 plus 8 plus 16 plus 25 plus 32. And I get 165. So I have that the sum, capital sigma, sum, is 165. So that's the total down here. It's 165. Oh, now I gotta have to go back to decimals again. Because to make a percentage out of this, I'm going to need a decimal. So I take 111 and I divide by 165. And that gets me 0.673 if I'm doing three decimal places. Okay, so this is approximately 0.673 because we're rounding, right? So just so we're clear, this is the fraction, this is the decimal, but they asked about percent. So the way to get to percent is to take the fraction, make it a decimal, and then percent, cent hundredths, right? We want to move the decimal two spots over so that it's in the hundredths place, or after the hundredths place. So it would be 67.3%. And actually, I'm just going to um, star that, because you want to be able to make that, uh, that leap. Let me actually, let me make a note. So note, we'll just kind of carve this out of here, <laughs> right? So decimals to percents is a very important skill. We do this a lot in this class. We'll go backwards and forwards. So if you have a decimal of 0.123, you take your decimal place and you move it one, two spots over, and it'd be 12.3%, right? Move the decimal two spots to the right, right? To go from decimals percents, two percents. That's the way it goes. And actually, I will tell you that percents to decimals works the opposite, right? So percents to decimals goes the opposite way. So if I had, I'm just going to make something up. <laughs> So if I have 78.9%, uh, uh, I move the decimal, instead of moving it two spots to the right, like I did here, so it went that way, I'm going to move it two spots to the left, and it's going to go that way, and it'll be 0.789. These are very important skills. We will do this repeatedly in this course. So you want to make sure to make a note to yourself somewhere along the way about how to make those conversions. All right, the last two questions are kind of two sides of the same coin, so this won't, this won't be too hard. So explain why we can't be sure if any student received an 83%. So 83 is in the middle of this bin. It's in the middle of this class. And that's exactly the problem. Because all the data are binned, we don't know what any individual got. 
So let me write that down. So because the data are grouped into bins, those bins are generic, right? They're groups. We don't know what any particular student got. Um, we just don't have that information. It's given to us in this table, not for individuals, but for groups. And then why don't we know the lowest grade? Well, the lowest grade, it's not quite that it's binned. It's actually because this is, this is um, open-ended. We don't know the lowest value because the first class is open-ended. So we don't know the lowest value. Although to be fair, even if I did put a lowest value in there, then I would have the problem that the bins are grouped and you don't know what the lowest score was anyway. But um, these two things, basically there's two kinds of problems you can have, and sometimes you have both. Open-ended classes, you don't know where they end. And grouped bin classes, you don't know what the individual scores were. So you kind of have two problems with these particular types of tables.